Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my fellow YouTubers, Facebookians. Aries here with a video uh, for here on Living Simply and Fun. Uh, I've been meaning to do this. Aaron and I have been talking about it. Uh, he gave me some cheat notes to go over, as we call them sometimes. Uh, I just looked over something that was a pure, um, uh, a pure blessing. Uh, that just came out. I'm going to do some more research on it. But it looks very promising. And I want one. So we'll see how well it works. Uh, now. This is video topic is going to be about fly fishing. And choosing a fly rod. I've talked to many fly shops. Fly companies out there. And a lot of them turn around. And they say stuff like. Um, how to choose a... Um, a fly rod you know and uh, I for one am kind of getting um, irritated because people out there need to choose the right fly rod now there's people out there that say oh well you need this or that so um, so anyways sorry I was answering a message now uh, that was my co-host Aaron. Now, anyways, the bottom line is simple, actually. Choosing a fly line is not that hard to go fly line to equal to the fly rod. A fly rod is thin or thicker depending on the size. Now, there's three types. You got glass rods, bamboo rods, which were earlier, which is slow action, and you got uh, graphite, which are newer. Now, I'm going to bring you, first of all, I want to talk to you about the zero to, to uh, the zero to, um, one weight. The zero to one weight are basically, uh, you know, simple rods. Now, uh, zero to one, uh, a one weight rod is supposed to go from 28 by the way, so you guys know I'm not BSing or making this crap up, I'm going to be using this as a reference guide. I got a copy of this I'm going to be ordering soon. Uh, I'm also going to reference, uh, I didn't return a library book uh, that I have. Uh, a, uh, one of my subscribers, uh, I believe she's a subscriber, Angela, bought me a book for a gift. Sweetheart, by the way, I use it all the time. Um, I just... The library one's still available, and I haven't returned the library. Now, for small, small ones, 28 to 16 is um, size 1 fly line. Now, that means trout with small flies and small streams. Now, Angela got me a copy of this book. Uh, I'm almost done with it yet again. Now, the reason I'm talking about this, and I will get to it, is simple. I want to show you a couple pictures. This is a small stream. Now, mind you, you guys can sit there and laugh, but small streams, this is what they're talking about. I call them frylings or finger fish. Some of them can be up to 10, 10 inches. Now, most people go from 1 to 4 inch thing, like this here. Look at the guy's hand, if you can. <clears throat> As you can see, very, very looking right there. The guy's picture is there. Now, if you look at it immensely, you can see that, uh, and by the way, Orvis can have all the credit they want. If you want a copy, the book is called Orvis Guide to Small Stream. It's kind of wordy, but it's got some cool pics. Now, this is not why I'm here to talk about it, no. What I'm talking about is the little teeny dinky fish. Now. There is small fish that makes small flies. We're talking flies that might be very hard to tie. That is why I'm talking about what I'm talking about. See, for example, there's a fish right there in the guy's hand. I call them hand fries. Smaller than my uh, a fishing knife, but you can't do much with them. Or this one, as you see. See? So those are the types of fishing you do on a one way. This one here it looks like it's dead. They didn't put it back in the water fast enough. But, you know, that's a little trout. This one's another little trout in the guy's hand, if you see. Now, the thing I'm pointing out is these little streams is the best streams. Now, stream fishing is for smaller trout. Now, this guy here, 
he pulled up a lunker right there. I mean, that's probably a good three or four, maybe five pounder. Problem? It's not a problem. Some streams have the bigger ones, but a lot of smaller streams have the smaller ones. Now, why am I talking about streams? I'll tell you why I'm talking about streams. Streams are simple. Streams are uh, simple. You got streams, you got rivers, and you got creeks. These are streams, there's creeks. Problem with them is simple. Uh, I was talking to Angela in a letter, and she was telling me her area where she lives has um, streams or creeks. Now, there's another small brownie right there in the guy's hand. Uh, they can get up to like 10 inches. Now, I'm going to go over some of it, but you get the idea on the fish and what they do. They also talk about what flies here. Casting in small streams, yada, yada, yada. But you get the idea. When you're fly fishing, you got to realize that, A, the main thing, like I said, here's a fryling in again, I call it. But some of them can be full size, but those little teeny things, it looks like the tail's been eaten up there. It says most of the trout are this big. Yes, right there. See, that is why a lot of people get a kick out of going fishing in these little streams. It's serene. There's nothing around there. However, you could say, oh, well, how come they're that small? Well, I'm going to answer that question first of all before I go into fly sizes. Now, mind you, the reason some of them are so small in these streams is simple, actually. Streams are small. That means the fish can't grow as big as they want. So, to some of you out there, again, the guide that I was using as reference is this one, the Small Streams Guides. Um, usually, I keep the library one right now as a reference. Uh, I will be returning it. I do have my copy. I do like to use. Now, the, uh, one way is, like I said, is for designing probably um, uh, between 0.2 and 0.7 pounds for a 0 to 2 weight. Now, a one weight, as I said, two weights the same. A two weight is uh, the same pretty much. A two weight can do 28, 14. So that is trout and small to medium sized rivers. Not a lot of people would use a two weight. Most of them are six to seven foot. So depends on what you're doing. Now you got a three weight. Three weight does trout and big rivers and lakes, which is three weight goes 28, 14. I don't know, 28, I don't know. 24 to 12 so size 12 so size 12 means the biggest flies size 26 and 24 is the smallest um, uh, fly line so there you go then you got freshwater bass and bike you're looking at um, well, various but no trout and big rivers and lakes you're looking at a size 20 to a size 10 now, size 20 to size 10, you're looking at, um, between a 4 and a 6 weight. Yeah, 4 to 6 weight for large streams. A lot of people use a 4 weight rod because they think it's more fun. Now, you got to also ask yourself, and I'll get to it again now, a 3 weight is designed for up to two pounds of fish and up to say 15 inches i'm using my cheat sheet here four inch rod a four weight rod is between one and three pounds usually you can get away with a four weight rod more likely um uh, between a three and a four in, uh, three to four weight rod in our local lakes here because that's it if you can get a three weight that's nine foot you're good four weights always in a nine foot <laughs> But I'm not done. Five weights, you're all general purpose. It'll do everything pretty much and help in the wind as well. Six weight is really good for larger fish. Now, a lot of people, and I'm going to say this, a lot of people are asking about the higher weighted ones. Now, I have to say, in my uh, research and etc. in fly fishing, that sometimes when you read brochures or info or etc you see brochures like this one thanks to rl winston for uh, last year's brochure it talks right here about what they recommend their fishing going for 
you know, it's just like trite routes for bamboo, but it doesn't talk about this and that. This is probably a good one. Now, if you look on this size here, it talks about right here, you know, uh, different ones like boron 2x, VSL, two-handed, etc. Now, if you skip the two-handed rods and you go directly to, say, the Passport, for example, it'll go three weights to ten weights. Now, ten weights are for some huge fish. I didn't get to ten weights yet. All I said is up to six weights. Now, I was talking to someone uh, the other day about, uh, I believe, an eight weight. Um, uh, the other day about something, but someone was talking about big brown fish. GVX Select here says, It's a good salt, wa salt water that can use for bonefish to redfish the stripers. It's also saying it's good for steelhead and big fall browns, yeah. Eight weight is good if you're pulling up, say, a 15 pound um, brown trout, which very rare. A guy, a friend of mine, told me today, he said, Yeah, I caught me in the canals an 18 pounder. I'm sorry, but if there's an 18 pounder in there, you need a picture. Otherwise, it's just a story. So, anyways, let's get down to it. Five weights, as I just said, the five weights will shoot you. Um, 18, oh, hold on, 18 to size 6. So you're doing 18 to size 6 when it comes to your flies. Now, they say that's a universal all around. Five weights are basically what everyone sells nowadays. Now, if you want to hire one that's a light salt water rod, which some say you can get yourself a size 16 to a size 4, size 6 fly rod. Size 6 is where I, uh, is good because of where I am. It's easier to maintain. A size 7. But let's just get back to it. Size 5. 5 weight says it's capable of etc, etc, etc. 5 weight's good for 3 to 5 pound trout. Now 6 weight they say is about 5 to 7 pound. Depending on your leader, your tippet, your etc. Now I got to 7 weight. 7 weights are good. For this this one here says so seven weights are good for uh, streamer fishing for large trout, often with sinking lines. However, also says it's about nine to thirteen pounds. Now seven weight is another all around good one for larger trout. But how many people are going for larger trout? Size seven. Size seven is a fourteen to a size two. Yeah. So, if you look at it that way, and a size 7 will probably pull up a small, small mouth bass and possibly a, a medium large mouth bass, or a small me, uh, large mouth bass. Uh, yeah, 5, 6, 7, and 8s and 9s have applications for bass fishing. This came from a forum, by the way, that uh, my assistant found and printed it out. So... Uh, eight weights are good, it says here, by summer and winter steelhead, up to 10 to 14 pounds. Well, now I want to talk to you about, this is fresh water. Now it says here, 10 weights, uh, or 9 weights are good for winter steelhead and tight quarters, larger fish, also for smaller chum and schnook, 14 to 17. Alright, well let me just put it to you this way. An eight weight for flies will hold a 12 to a size uh, 10 to a size 10. Now if you go size 10 to 10, you're looking at between a 6 and an 8, however no one talks about it. Here's the matching lines with fish. Now a size 8 I was talking to someone today about steelhead and salmon. One company says you need a size 9 for steelhead and salmon. Another person said they've done a lot of fishing on a size 8 in this part of the woods. We're in the Pacific Northwest with no trouble. Size 8, size 9. Now, I'm going to get into the details in a second. Now, 9 is more of a saltwater uh, thing. 10 is very good. It says, as I said, now size 10, a size 9... Holds and then number eight. Or hold on. 
And number two, to a four point a four o on your uh, fly uh, on your flies. And we're talking jumbos. That's a ten. Now eleven is um, a one o to a five o. Now mind you, elevens. Uh, however, let's just say three and four it is for panfish. Six, seven, and eights and nines are used for bonefish and snooks. Nine or ten is used for permits. However, the note here says, how can you catch um, certain things that are uh, 40 to 50 pounds? It's r really rare. Uh, tens and twelves are used for Dorado and Tarpan, which is between 15 and 29 pounds and 60 to 280 pounds. Now, a 12 weight here. Is the same as 11 weight. 2 to 5 0 by the Orvis guide. 13s and 14s are. I don't know. This is 1.0 to 5.0. But this one here for 13s and 14s are 2.0 to 6.0 for tuna, sailfishes, and marlins. Now, if you look at the big picture, 8 to 4.0. So if you take the thing and go 8. 4.0 you got a size 9 to 4.0 to 13 so it's telling you right there what you need to do for certain ones or 12 I should say and it goes down if you buy the book you can match the lines but here's the kicker when it comes to fly fishing you got to ask yourself one main key what are you fishing how are you fishing What type are you doing? Nymph streamers, fly raw, uh, flies, uh, dry flies, wet flies, um, streamers, and etc. You can have a fly rod for each application if you wish. Then you can just take them one out and put one in and you're good. Now it also depends on what you're going for. Now, uh, like I said, and I'm going to go and break it down to you so it's simpler for you fly people watching this. Now, I'm going to have my assistant look at this over tomorrow, this video. But, if you look at this catalog, for example, Cabela's goes 3 weight to 8 weight. 8 weight is the maximum for fresh water. Now, if you want anything, 3 is like here, 4 weight. If you look at it that way, 1 to 8 is fresh waters. You can get 8 to 12 here that's salt water, but this is the maximum it goes, is 12. Then you look at some of these other ones. They have some that are fresh water and etc but you gotta also look at it thoroughly you also have salt water two handed ones that can go up to 12 or 14 weight some of them are very rare but you gotta look at the applications to it what you're fishing what your plans are what your uh, mission is for fishing and etc most people like in the back of this Cabela's catalog here shows up to 8 weight 8 weight is for fresh water a lot of people are going for fresh water now a lot of people who want to go to uh, uh, salt water but you also got to look at your line some have to be sinking some have to be floating some you have to be on a boat etc you have to look at your applications of what you're fishing now mind you there is another alternative when you're matching your fly rod and what you need and what you don't need you can have the best rods or you can have the most inexpensive rods and I'll explain that too the best rods or rods if you look in this one here like for example sage where you look at the line weight, then you look at the weight in ounces. The lighter the rod, the more easier it's going to fling the fly line with your fly to get it to the fish. The uh, shorter, uh, the, the, the heavier the rod, the more power you need to uh, fling it. But, at least uh, you know, like a saltwater 12 weight by sage, it's a 5 and three quarters but it's got to be built by the way to handle said fish it's 12 weight 14s is the same you know you got to look at it the lighter the rod the more finicky and the more uh what's that word the more the pre delicate presentation has to be made to get the fish before it spooks whereas other ones you don't have to like for example you really want a heavy duty fish for say salmon or etc like this list was saying a size 10 but here's the kicker you're going to be going to Alaska to go fishing or you're going to go to a river in the 48 that has salmon 
was talking to someone today about salmon fishing, and I asked him literally a question about salmon and steelhead. The answer I got was simple. Simple is, is you got to pay a minimum of $320 for a 9 weight. And they recommended it because it had a warranty of 25 years. Now, 25 years. Now, mind you, that isn't bad at all if you want a 25-year warranty at $320. But... I was talking about their basic starter rod for 159. Their basic starter rod can handle saltwater, uh, uh, Atlantic salmon, and uh, Pacific salmon. They said you needed to spend $320 plus tax, by the way, to upgrade to a nine weight, the one with the real combo. 320 buckaroos for nine weight. Their 10 and 12 weights, let's just say, were. Uh, no, um, uh, you know, then they said if I really wanted a, an American made one and not designed in America, just like the ones in Passport, then I can upgrade to a 10 weight, 10 weight, by the way, for $645. I'm not going to give you the brand. You don't need to know it. So I looked and I said to my assistant, something is not kosher. When you ask a question and then they tell you. Then they said if I wanted something that was 9 foot, 10 to 12 weight in their best models, that I'd have to pay $1,345, $1,390 if I wanted an 11 footer, or $1,345, $1,360, or 1360 then I could not worry and I could pull up anything without even barely touching the rod. Uh, excuse me, but when you ask someone a question and they turn around to tell you you need to spend more money on a 9 weight, that's when you realize you need to do some research. So then you look over some stuff. Another company messaged me from the Pacific Northwest. They said, an 8 weight rig? Perfect. There's two companies in the Pacific Northwest that makes fly rods. Both companies basically are, well, three actually. Two are condensed into one company. But the one company said you can get anything, basically, you can catch anything in the Pacific Northwest. But they also answered the question that my assistant and I were talking about. Got to look at the location. That's the other key to fly fishing. The location is the key. Now look it over, do your research, figure out what you need to do and what you're not going to do. For example, rivers where I am at and near me, we only have Chinook salmon. Chinooks. You do research, you say, oh, a number eight's perfect. Now, if you want a number nine or a number ten, you got to go to the ocean. Then you're basically trying to do it in the, in the, um, in the, on the beaches, like the Puget Sound. But guess what? First, you got to locate the fish where they're feeding and stuff, which ain't easy if you're walking along the beach because little beach comes in, beach goes out. When I was in Australia, I didn't see much fish on, off the beach. You know, there was maybe a few, water was crystal clear at night, but I never came across any sharks at all. There you have it. So you got to be very specific on where you're fishing and what you're fishing. Most people say, oh, you need a 9 weight, a 10 weight, a 12 weight, a 14 weight. 16 weight, the rare ones if you really want. But I asked someone to explain something to me between a 14 and a 16. I haven't got an answer back, but I'm not going to bother. On fishing for marlin or billfish, you can do it. They fight like hell, but no one told me what happened. The company that I talked to said that fly rods get eaten up pretty bad if you're fighting salmon and steelhead. Well, I'm sorry, but when I talked to the other company in the Pacific Northwest, both of them, they said as long as you keep your lines clean, keep your rod maintained, make sure it doesn't break, always inspect it, make sure your rod's good, you'll have a good salmon and steelhead rod in eight for years to come. You don't need to fork out money. Here's another thing I want to say before going. Now, a lot of you people out there have asked me time and time again to explain fly fishing a little better. I've even tried to do it a bit in letters to Angela. 
Now, I'm getting tired of writing uh, at the moment and emailing and stuff, but here's my, here's my simple thought of fresh water. Fresh water can go between uh, 6 foot, sometimes 5 foot, to 8 foot, depending on your size. Now, like I said, most fish is one to, uh, one to, one to, um, one, uh, one weight, there is the rare zero weight, but one weight, which is very rare to find nowadays, usually it's two or three weight to eight weight, and then you gotta match up the, the length. Now, the longer the rod, the better you are off. Now, a lot of shorter rods are streams, streams and creeks, so you don't need that huge one. Now, the smaller the rod, like the five footer is for the smaller of the creeks. I mean, we're talking dinky creeks that are size of six or eight feet long, maybe ten. That's like an irrigation canal. Very small. Um, you got to also ask yourself what you plan to do with your rod. Now, a lot of people go out and they say, oh, well, I'd like to know what to do. Well, you got to ask yourself several things. The next one is your line. You're going to be using floating line, sinking line, etc. Now, for most lakes, you want sinking line or at least sinking floating or a combination, which means carrying a one reel with an extra spool so you can rotate the spools out and change them so you can change it if the fish aren't biting. Uh, sometimes you might want to carry a second fly rod for wet flies and one for dry flies and one for streamers, nymphs. You can also put a set up uh, applications for each fly rod for that. Say you have four six weights, you can use one for each or five six weights. It depends. Now, in my area, some of the trout are one to one and a half pounds. That's it. When the lakes are stocked. Um, secondly, you got to also ask yourself, not just about length of rod, but what type of tip do you want? Do you want slow action, which the entire rod bends like a bamboo rod? Do you want a mid action, which means two thirds of the rod bends from the mid section? Or do you want the tip flex, which means only the tip flex? See, that is it. They say the tip flex is a fast dish. The, uh, the mid flex is a medium action rod. And then you got the slow action, which is usually your glass rods, uh, aka fiberglass, or your bamboo. And that's it. Otherwise, you got to look around. Now, a lot of places don't give you the information. For example, um, Cabela's sometimes has information on them. Um, Sometimes they don't. Just says what numbers they are and etc. Like this one here. It says R.L. Winston. Fast action. Just for this one. Another one. A new R.L. Winston. Fast action. But sometimes you have to go. This one. Uh, the um, uh, the trout rods. These trout rods here. Medium fast action. For beginners, you might just need a medium action rod. You know, you don't need something that's like zippy and fast unless you're ready. Now, a guy I watched recently, Tom Rosenbauer, basically said, from Orvis, by the way. He's an Orvis guy. He wrote these books, like this one. It says Tom Rosenbauer. He says, there he, I think that's him on the front. He says that to start for the first few years, you need a be between a two and three hundred dollar rod anything more and you won't know the difference you won't even know how it feels you're getting down your fly casting abilities and you're bettering yourself as a fly fisher person that's true that is so so true in the older catalogs it actually talked about the casting abilities of the fly cast uh, are the tips like in this one you can look at some of them like in the catalog, the starter rods that Orvis has, for example, didn't say anything about uh, what type of uh, the tip is. You know, is it mid flex, is it mid tip, etc. Now, some of the other ones, like their one that they recommended, um, like this one, you got your spay and switch rods for salt water, the heavy duty ones. It says here, uh, length. Uh, right there, flex, tip flex. So yeah, tip flex means only the tip flexes. Like I said, then you got other ones. Like this one here says tip flex. This one here said mid flex. Their uh, upgraded version here doesn't say. So you have to ask. They say they're mid flex. 
Then you go higher, for example. Again, you gotta look. Tip flex, tip flex. There's one mid flex right here and four weight. Everything else is tip flex for their big game one. Here you go. You got mid flex, tip flex, mid flex, tip flex. Depends on what you're doing. If you need it for certain applications, you do it. These ones here are full flex, which means full flex is slow action, which means, um, yeah, mid flex means medium action. Full flex is the slowest action possible for fiberglass right there. Then you got tip flex right there for uh, salt water. And then you got to ask yourself, do you want to pay a high premium, as Tom Rosenbauer would say, for... Um, for American made or made in another country. Some of the affordable ones offer you zero warranty, like I was saying earlier in the video, or some that are not zero warranty and gives you 25 years. Then you got some places that give you full warranty. So you got to ask yourself, again, for the recap, well, do you need a $200 fly rod? Or do you need a uh, $1,300 or $1,400 fly rod? A friend of mine just went out and bought several fly rods recently. I believe he bought, uh, I think he said he spent $1,300. He's been in the bit fly fishing for years. He's going to get some more, but he bought himself. Uh, I asked him about the glass rods recently out of curiosity. He said no. Uh, that's the, uh, here we go. He spent $1,210 for mid-flex 6-foot fly rod in a 2-weight. $1,200. He likes the brand. Let him have it. $1,200. He can buy a lot more fly rods in quantities and set them up for various things. And forking out $1,200. But then you have the loyalists. No, we'll do it. Then again, you got some of these purists that will go and spend uh, $700 or $800 just for a Winston. Or say $1,400 for a Scott's. Or some of them you got the purists that like their bamboos, which they have to have the classic bamboos. You can find bamboos. Most bamboos are about eight foot, eight foot six. You can get some nine footers, but they're rare. I read a book by John uh, Gre uh, Greibach, I think it is, uh, whatever his name is. Anyways, he writes books and he did one very good on bamboo. He explained uh, the different sizes and stuff. Usually you can see between a uh, zero weight to a uh, five weight, mostly five. You can find heavier bamboo, like I said. Um, R.L. Winston said they went to like ten weight in bamboo, but again, bamboo is very complicated. Uh, for example, the Boo Boys that make their boo rods out of sweet grass, which was part of the founding bamboo things for uh, Winston out of Montana. Six thousand. Uh, there's a thing called sweet grass. Which is a video on Amazon. You can get it rented on Prime. Or if you're a Prime member, it's free. It talks about 6,000 applications to make one fly rod. That's why you're paying three grand. Now, you can get people that can make you um, on their spare time cheaper. We got to remember, it takes time. And they're doing it cheaper because they got the, they're doing it cheaper. But these ones here... These ones here are doing it out of loveness, love, and they have more experience. So you got to ask yourself, will it last? Probably. Depends. So, bottom line is, where are you going to fish? Are you going for panfish or are you going for trout? Are you going for salmon and steelhead or are you going for the large, big, uh, small and largemouth bass? Or are you going for uh, pikes, muskies, or... Um, walleyes or are you going for something else then when you do that if you haven't gone to it go to amazon or barnes and noble and pick up orvis fly fishing guide now i'm not endorsing orvis but the guide is very good it'll help you match your line on this list here or you can keep replaying this video until you get it or you can message me and i can help you out now most people go with trouts for various sizes. Now, like I said, you can go with at least a four weight to six weight for basic trout. Um, also, if you get a time, order yourself a fly fishing catalog if you're interested with Cabela or a Bass Pro, and they will guide you as well. Just remember, sometimes if you're looking for a three weight, you won't find anything in a nine foot rod. You have to look very carefully to find it. Because usually it's four weight on up. Three weight is usually a shorter rod for creeks. 
and streams. Um, now this one here, for example, the uh, LSI, for example, you can get in a three weight. You're paying 190 for it just for the rod only, but you do get a nine weight. But you got to look for yourself thoroughly. And just remember, two weight is uh, about uh, 0.2 to 0.7, so that's like three quarters of a pound. Supposedly it holds. Depending on your leader and your tippet material, for uh, three weight will hold. Uh, oh yeah, three weight will hold 0.2 to two pound fish up to 15 inches. Now four weight will be one to three. So you just gotta ask yourself, uh, etc. And then uh, five weight, etc. Five weights all around. But like I said, you gotta look around. I've never seen a two weight and nine foot configuration. Usually it's um, smaller. You can't get a two weight and a five foot length. And they're pretty good. They make it with a 10 year warranty. And it's like close quarter. Uh, tight quarter rods by Cabela's. So for example. Check them out. You'll know what to do. Oh and for some of you that want the entire package deal. You can find them all on. Reds has got a good trout, classic trout setup. I'm not endorsing Red by the way. They're not paying me to say this. Or Cabela's, they got, or you know, they got their Prestige 2, which comes with uh, all the little goodies here. It's also on the back if you want to see. You can get that for 170 for fresh water, of course, and for steelhead salmon. Uh, it's highly recommended for the price. The only thing I don't agree with is in my book I marked down it's got a one year warranty. That's the other thing. If it doesn't say in Cabela's what the warranty is, assume it's one. Some places it's unlimited, some places it isn't. Now, some places say get your get your basic sixty dollar rod here and try it out. Some people say it's bad. So also do your reviews on the rod you're buying. And if you see something like uh, and I'm not endorsing Sage. Sage is very good, by the way. They're a very good company. Sage and uh, and Reddington. They're both owned uh, now by the same company. Reddington, you know, sold up and went to Sage. But you don't need to buy the first sage rod from 4 to 6 weight or 6 to um, uh, 11 weight for uh, salt water or etc. You don't need to buy the Method Elite which is a 5 or 8 weight at 1300 to start out with. You can get a lot of fishing gear etc. So just remember 200 rod will do good. So also look at like I said your uh, your warranties. but. Also ask yourself, where are you fishing? Fishing small creeks and that's all that's available. You go for a one to three weight. Now if you're going for uh, streams, you might get away with a two to four weight. Depending on your size, you know, you also have to ask yourself what type of casts you're going to do. Then the bottom line is, is um, besides fish, weight, tippets, etc. And you can also ask people for guidance. So remember, the fly companies sometimes like some companies will tell you you need a bigger rod than it's needed. Do some research. I had my sister dig me up a cheat sheet here, and I borrowed the Orvis guy, and then I gave you some information on the book. And just remember, sometimes they'll say something like, "Oh well, you know, you gotta base your purchase with a warranty." Some of them have lifetime warranties like Sage, Reddington for the most part, uh, Orvis has a 25 year, Cabell's a 25 or 10 year. Some places have lifetime like Echo, uh, some of them uh, like uh, um, uh, St. Croix they have a lot of them. Some of them are lifetime limited warranties and some are 5 year. Like their Rio Santos which is their beginner rod for about $220 and goes from Four weight to eight weight, you're paying uh, uh, 160 to 200 with real combo. But if you don't want the real combo, for example, you can go with different. Now, most of these places, by the way, Cabela's builds their own reels from them. You still get the rod that's uh, unlimited. The only difference is, is as I said, you are most likely um, getting a combo, which is one of their reels. But you get the rod. But if you just want the rod, the rod's cheaper because it's a starter rod. Most starter rods go for 100 to 120, depending. You can get cheaper Walmart brands, but I can't guarantee how better they will be. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing real quick, I'm flipping through uh, fly rods here, I'm trying to find it through uh, Saint Croix, which is one of the best places to make your own rod if you wish, Orvis or 
others if you have the blanks. I think here it is. Uh, you got to look at around here that talks about design, handcrafted, etc. Now, or, this one here, Sig Foy is real good. They actually tell you if it's made in America or made in Mexico. If it's made in America, you're getting a lifetime warranty. Uh, if it's made in Mexico, you're looking at approximately made a uh, five year warranty. The Rio Santos is the only one that's uh, decent and also talks about in this book here if you ever request one from there to talk about the action fast actions your best so for starters some people say you need a slow action others say medium action reds fly shop which i'm not endorsing basically said a medium medium action fly rod is good like the classic trout um the rio santos is a moderate action which you get everything here in this book right here all these little gizmos right here fly rod tube everything sock etc for approximately um, 200 to 210 and it also tells you how long it is etc the you can match it up from the model numbers here to the length usually they're nine foot rods so technically you got to ask yourself also it'll tell you if it's a four piece or a two piece mostly people get four pieces for travel um, so, um, yeah. So just remember, this one here, like I said, made in Mexico. It's got five-year warranty. Do not be turned off by any fly rod out there that's made in China. A lot of fly rods are made in Korea, China, uh, Mexico, um, in those areas. For example, Cabela's wouldn't tell us where some of theirs is made, but... Bass Pro said that their uh, specialty Vanguard ones were made in Vermont. More likely, they're made by Orvis. But uh, they didn't say what the light warranty is. Um, Simple Fork Outfitters, um, no one knows. But when you look around and you look at fly rods, say in Cabela's, for example, you can look at the side here. And some of them will basically tell you exactly where they're made from. For example, first page here for fly rods is the American series. Right here, made in the USA. Won't tell you where it's made. Some say sage, by the way. That's what my assistant said when he came across for my cheat sheet. But if you look at the big picture, right here, rod only combo. You know, it's got a 25-year warranty right here, but it doesn't talk about it. You actually got to look and look up the information. Once you find out, you know, it's 25-year, you can assume it's a Orvis, but it isn't. But then again, no one knows. Then you got to look right here. 25-year warranty. You might be like, oh, this looks cool, but you know what? When it just says right here, no flag on the side, you can assume imported. So you got an imported right there and you're paying more. The quality of the rod is very good for the quality. You can't just sit there and say, oh, well, it looks like crap because it's not made in America. You can't say that. A lot of the stuff is made in China and a lot of stuff is made in other countries. Um, sometimes you can get a decent warranty, like 10 years for this, and people say, oh, well, what's the point? What if they may, don't make it anymore and you have to find something different? Well, Cabela's will try to stand by their products, so don't worry. One-year warranties you can try to avoid or not. If you get one year of fly fishing, it falls apart. Maybe you got your money's worth. I don't know, but I will tell you, a friend of mine told me, and all the times that he's owned a Orvis, a Sage, a Scotts, a Will, uh, a Will, uh, R.L. Winston, um, uh. Other ones, you know, like uh, St. Croix, uh, Temple Fork Outfitters, you name it, that has the big warranties. He's never used them. He's got a boatload of fly rods, for example. He's never used one of them. He said, if you know what you're doing, you won't have to go through one. You're not going to be stupid. A lot of people break their rods doing stupid things, leaving it on top of their car, slamming it in the door. If you take good care of it and you disassemble it, put it in the rod case, when you leave, store it in the proper place, you're fine. One guy said he had a bamboo that was like five grand. He left mold on it. When he went to get it out four months later, he forgot it. He left it in there after fishing. 
it went moldy. You just got to take care of your fly rod, and it'll take care of you as long as you don't sit there and bash it, bang it, slam it, crunch it, you name it. So you got to look at it that way. Now, you know how to take care of a good fly rod? It'll last you 15, 20 years, even when the warranty is there. Back in the old days, we didn't have long-term uh, fly rods. Let's just say Winston was around 80 years ago and you got your first fly rod at 5 and you're 85 now, which they're 80 years old or so. You think someone's going to sit there and be like, my fly rod broke, you need to back it up. Well, they'll, first of all, they're going to look at it and say, we can't make a new one after 80 years. But you got 80 years of service out of it, so you should not complain, you know. But a lot of companies are offering a limited warranty to the owner of the uh, first owner of the rod. So don't be upset about it, you know. Some places say, oh, well, I'd like to buy this rod or that rod with a kit, but the warranty's one year. Heck, I had to fix one, one manufacturer that said lifetime in Cabela's when it's actually one year. So it also depends on what you are going to do with it. A lot of people stand by it. Like one place that makes fly rods is made in Korea. I heard one place was making their fly rods out of Singapore. Rumor has it was LL Bean. So you got a lot of fly rod choices. Just choose the one that makes you happy, whether the name sings or whether it does the job. Whether it's fast action, medium action, or slow action. All right. Bottom line is, is choose what you're going to be fishing. What line size you need from size 1 to 16. What type of flies you're going to be flinging out there. Remember, the smaller the flies, the more likely you're going to get uh, a little mackerel or a little uh, sardine that you're catching, as I call them, freshwater sardines. Otherwise, move up in uh, fishing. And, you know, uh, exactly. In lakes, you can start with at least a four weight because a four weight's basically mostly what people use nowadays, anyways. One to three is more for trout fishing and streams. You get away with it, but still, you know. And by the way, for fly rods, you can go, uh, with fly rods, I believe it says you can go two lines up on it. So if you got a five weight, you can use up to a seven weight raw line, but you can't take a seven weight line and drop it to a five weight. It's not good. So remember that. You can go two sizes up. So, I've rambled, ranted and rambled long enough. So, I hope this helps you choosing your fly rod. Thank you for continuing to watch this. This video is very good. In my opinion, this should help you out for all of you out there. I'm not endorsed by any of the people like Sage, Reddington, Sage Corporation, Orvis, or the likes. I'm just giving you my opinions, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. I'm trying to help you all choose the right fly rod. For the right money, and just remember, to start out with, you don't need to spend $200. Uh, 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 I mean, you can't, I mean, you can, uh, maximum 200 is what I mean. Anything higher is higher, but if you want to pay 60 go for it. Heck, I tried playing with a two-piece, uh, eight-foot-six, five-weight, made by Eagle Claw. The so, so thing was so stiff, I thought if you used it, it'd break. But you, if you can get into an Eagle Claw that's very stiff, so be it. It's also basically based on your pocketbook. But remember, you buy a fly rod that has no leader, no uh, line, and etc. That's what I was going to say before going. Is this here. If you buy a fly rod right here, it'll tell you right there what you're doing. Like this here tells you what type of rod you're buying and uh, combination. But now if you look at it, for example, here, it'll say paired with. Um, right there it says, uh, for example, L Tech Combos. So, right there, for example, it'll say, Save when you pair on L Tech Combo Rod with uh, Premier or WLX Reels. Freshwater Combos come with uh, weight forwarding, floating line, and backing. Yeah, so those are the things you got to look at. Cabela's does that. I don't know if, um, uh, Bass Pro does. I haven't seen the catalogs, but if you look closely and you look around, you know, it'll say rods only. Now, if you go to combos here, like here in the catalog, it'll tell you exactly combos. Look for combos if you want to save some money. Otherwise, if you can't find combos, it's just going to say rods only. Like here, 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 it'll say this. 
This here has got everything. This here has got everything. But also look at the war team. If you're good with one year, go with one year. If you're kind of worried, then don't go with it. It just depends on what you're looking for. This one here has a combo. This one's a combo. You know, it just tells you what you're spending. This one's a, a good combo too. You know, you get combos, etc. And also look at your pocketbook. Don't put yourself in the poorhouse. Because once you get a combo, you still got to buy your flies and your extra leader and tippets. And then a few little accessories just to get on the water. If you really like fly fishing and you can get into it, maybe in a year or two afterwards, invest in a three or $400 rod. Work your way up. The more experience you get, the more likely you're going to want to keep extra rods on hand for various applications for fishing. Now, if you're limited on what you're fishing, limit on what your rods you're going to use. Maybe you need one for nymphs and one for streamers, one for others. Whatever it is, stick with it and stay with it. And you'll do good. Just remember, there is combos. Like some of them here, won't have it. Like the Winston here. Uh, Winston says right here, combos. Passport combos only. Uh, other combos, like this one here, is just the rods. You can also contact fly companies sometimes, like Avid Max. Again, I'm not with them, and they can probably put together a combo for you. With that said, thank you everyone listening i want a cup of coffee thank you so much enjoy this evening and i hope this video helped you how to choose a fly rod in detail between leader tip backing extra everything may god bless the world and again please add and subscribe please post comments please add suggestions feedback thank you and again may god bless the world and one more thing any of you fly fisher out there that don't get through this whole video do not send a message asking me if I'm a boy or a girl. I've had a sex change, so technically that's who I am. Thank you. Again, may God bless the world.